Are the 2010s the greatest decade in NBA history? Let's find out. Good mythical morning, except not really, because that's not what this channel is. But hello, NBA fans. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't have my normal intro for this series, it's because I deleted it. Not on purpose, but uh, I happen to record all of my videos on a laptop that does not have much storage space. So every week or two, I gotta go in and delete most of the videos I've made from my saved, um, like from my files on the laptop, because otherwise I will not have room to make new videos. And apparently at some point I must have gone in and accidentally deleted the intro to this series. So you just gotta deal with my normal intro for now. I'm sure most of you are really, really sad you don't get to watch a minute and a half of really low quality uh, footage for this intro. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you're really missing that. So yeah, if anything, it's kind of a win-win. Uh, so let's get right into it, alright? That's enough of an intro for this. NBA 2010s. The most recent decade in NBA history. The one that just finished. And they were an incredible decade. The NBA 2010s are when I began watching basketball. I'm sure it's when most of you began watching basketball, alright? It is the freshest one in most of our minds, and it tends to be the one that many people believe is the best, because for most people, newer is better. It's as simple as that. The new one is what you know the most about, and therefore it is the best, no question. That seems to be the argument of most people who think LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. They're like, well, he played later, so his competition must have been better, he must have been a better player, yada yada yada. No research required. And it's definitely not that simple. However, the 2010s were a pretty damn good decade, okay? Let's start off. 2010s were the prime of LeBron James's career, a prime which hasn't really ended yet, but continued throughout the entire decade, okay? LeBron won three MVPs in this decade, including one that was almost unanimous. He left the Cavs, he won two titles with the Heat, and then one with the Cavaliers again when he returned. This whole decade really comes down to two teams. It comes down to LeBron and the Warriors. Whatever team LeBron was on in the East and the Golden State Warriors. Those are the teams of the decade. And there are some other ones to throw in there that were important for sure. Um, the Pacers and Celtics had a few seconds of goodness. Uh, the Raptors at the very end of the decade at least. The Spurs were great at the start. The Thunder had some moments. Uh, the Rockets towards the end of the decade. But really, there were two main teams, okay? Really, there were two. Whatever team LeBron James was on, and the Golden State Warriors. And with those two teams come two major themes of this decade. And those themes were shooting, specifically three-point shooting, and super teams. Now, let's get into how these things really affected the NBA and whether they were really good or not, because they seem to have very mixed opinions. If you listen to any of the talking heads on ESPN, who from the old days, you know, the Charles Barkleys, the Shaqs, they will tell you that the super teams are weak and that defense is weak and that three-point shooting is soft and that the new modern NBA sucks because, you know, players aren't getting into the paint and they're not taking mid-range shots like they used to. Urgh. And I think that's pretty stupid. Okay, that's just dumb. There's nothing wrong with more efficient basketball. The Warriors really did revolutionize three-point shooting. Now, it was happening slowly anyway, but Steph Curry really just kind of, like, set a flamethrower on the fire, okay? Like, it was slowly burning, and Steph Curry just came in and dumped a barrel of gasoline on three-point shooting, okay? He really brought along the three-point revolution, and I can't see it dying down anytime soon. Three-pointers are huge now. Teams take like a third of their shots from three now. It was like a tenth, like 20 years ago, okay? It's insane how much the three-pointer has grown in recent years. And there's some good things and bad things to it, okay? On one hand, I think both offense and defense is more complicated today, thanks to floor spacing. I think this allows certain players to be much better. I think this allows for better systems, for better team play. Uh, it just makes better basketball in a way because the floor is spaced out with people around the three-point line. And then also you get some crazy shots. I mean, Dame's game winner, for instance, against Russell Westbrook, which is one of my favorite shots ever because it made Russell Westbrook cry and along with all his fans, never would have happened without three-pointers, okay? Never would have happened because why on earth would he take a shot like that if it wasn't worth more points? 
crazy stuff like that. Steph Curry, phenomenal to watch because of his threes. Same with Klay Thompson, okay? Three-pointers do make the game more entertaining. However, there is an argument to be made that they are also taking away some entertainment from the game. It's really hurt the center position, first of all. Big men who can't shoot are really dying in the modern NBA. You got some guys like Joel Embiid who are so good that they're still dominant, but you look at like Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond would have been considered like a borderline superstar 20 years ago, and now he's just almost like, I don't want to call him a scrub, but he's not nearly an all-star level player, because he can't shoot, and he can't defend the perimeter. So, watching a team shoot up 53 pointers a night, like the Houston Rockets specifically, is not that entertaining in my opinion. You know, with the exception of the James Harden ISO, there's nothing that interesting happening on that team because they never take mid-rangers. Their entire offensive system is one thing. It's shooting threes and making layups, and that's all they do. And that does get boring. However, it, it's not like terrible. It's not like every team does this either, and that's more of a recent thing. It's just definitely an issue that does come with the decade with three-point shooting, but I think it's worth it considering the floor spacing that has also happened and the way that other things have changed. Super teams are another big thing with this decade, and for the casual fans, super teams are fantastic. For the NBA's popularity, it always comes with the super teams, okay? The Heat were the most popular team, then it was the Cavs, then it was the Warriors. People love super teams. They love seeing all these stars on one team, okay? It's the whole idea of the All-Star Game. People love to see great players play together. However, for a hardcore fan, they're kind of terrible. Nobody likes to go into the season. 2017 horrible season for the NBA, okay? Nobody liked it, because going into the season, you knew the Warriors were going to win. You knew they were going to dominate everyone. Is that entertaining to watch? No! 2018, same thing, except the East was even freaking worse, because Kyrie left the Cavs. Now, LeBron James's title run that year was absolutely incredible, but, I mean, he got swept at the end. You know, his game one performance against the Warriors in 2018, probably still the greatest basketball game, the greatest performance I have actually watched myself live. Um, and by live, I mean like when it happened, obviously I was not there. But it didn't matter because the team lost because the Warriors were just hella stacked. Like, what the fuck? That's not entertaining. You know, that really did hurt the entertainment value of the decade, in my opinion. Um, there were some great teams throughout the decade that weren't super teams. You take the Houston Rockets 2018, you take the Spurs 2014. The 2014 Spurs should have been the best team of the decade. They should have, no question. And the KD Warriors came along and were just like, fuck that and fuck parody. 2020 is looking to be a lot better, but the 2010s, man, super teams really hurt it. And the last big thing with this decade, I would say, is defense. People... It's a meme now. Modern defense is a meme. You look at anything about James Harden, it's about him traveling and flopping and getting foul calls that are bullshit, and everyone knows it. Everyone knows it's a thing, okay? You look at the game. Jason, here, this is a great example. Jason Tatum, before the playoffs last year, was complaining that refs would not give him the quote-unquote star treatment that he deserved because he didn't think he was getting the bullshit foul calls that he deserved, and it was a known thing. Like, that's how well known it is. It's not like, it's not just something the fans say. It's literally a thing the players know about. They know that if they play really well, the refs give them bullshit calls. No one wants to watch that. No one wants to watch James Harden go for the free throw line for the 15th time in a game because the other opponent breathed on his shoulder, okay? Nobody wants to watch that. That's not entertaining. It's not good basketball. And I do not like the 80s and 90s extra rough style of defense, okay? Don't get me wrong. When people say defense was better back in the day when people were allowed to beat the shit out of each other, that's not true. That was terrible defense. Watching frickin' the, the Detroit Pistons literally, like, try to dropkick Michael Jordan when he goes for a layup, that's not defense. That's just... That, that literally means you can't play defense. That's why you have to hit someone like that, okay? That's bullshit. That's not entertaining. That's not basketball. It doesn't require any skill. It's stupid. However, it also doesn't require any skill to get to the free throw line when you literally, like, run into someone else yourself who's playing defense properly and the refs blow the whistle on them and let you go get a foul for that. That's also stupid, okay? It's a meme. 
It's a joke, and it's not fun to watch, and it needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. We need to get back to balance. I feel like the 2000s had a very good balance. Okay, they had a good balance of a mix of three-point shooting and not, specifically toward the, towards the end of the 2000s, alright? They had a good mix of these very good teams, specifically in the West, but they didn't have too many super teams, okay? Not really, the Shaq and Kobe Lakers were not a super team, except in 2004 when everyone got hurt, alright? The rest of those years, they drafted Kobe, they got Shaq before drafting Kobe, or like the year they drafted Kobe, okay? They were not really a super team. The Boston Celtics were the first one, and they only won one title. Okay, then they got hurt. That was fine. 2010s, they were full of them. The Warriors, the Cavs, the La the the Heat. Okay, full of super teams. I really want to like this decade because it's when I started watching basketball. But when I look at it, I cannot honestly say that I think this decade is the best in NBA history. I can't even honestly say I think it's better than the 90s. Honestly, the 2010s really struggled. They did some really great things. They had a fantastic amount of star talent. But they just... I don't know, man. They just really struggled. There was a lack of big men throughout the decade that took away a whole position was pretty much trash, okay? DeMarcus Cousins and Joel Embiid have been the best big men of this decade. They have. And that's not great, considering Joel Embiid only played in, like, three seasons of it. And DeMarcus Cousins has been hurt for half of it, and on a terrible team for the other half. That's not good. It's just not good. Defense has been weak. The Eastern Conference has been maybe weaker than it even was in the 2000s during this decade. Eight straight finals is incredible for LeBron. Okay, don't get me wrong. Can't take that away from him. Eight straight finals is eight straight finals, and that is incredible. But at the end of the day, the Eastern Conference was weak as fuck. Okay? He had, like, one good year of the Pacers. There was, like, one good year of the Celtics during that run. Okay? The Raptors were always a joke. The Hawks were a joke. Okay? The the Bulls had, like, one good year with Derrick Rose, and then he got hurt. The Eastern Conference was terrible. The West was great. The East was terrible, though. Probably worse than it was during the 2000s. It was just... There's just a lot of things hurting this decade, and I think 2020 is going to be a lot better after this horrible coronavirus start. Um, I think the 2020s, as a decade, I should say, are going to be a lot better. But 2010s, man, I don't know. They just, they just didn't do it for me. They just don't, as a whole, the star power, like I said, off the charts, the new floor spacing was fantastic, but I don't know. I just don't think basketball was as entertaining as it was back in the 2000s. And honestly, maybe even back in the 90s. I feel like parody was just not great during this decade, and the basketball was not as good as it could have been. I expect Adam Silver, however, to work and get everything back on track in the coming 10 years. And the video on the 2000s, or I'm sorry, the video on the 2020s will be out soon. That will be the conclusion of this series. Look forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this video.